I love what they're doing with this, because honestly, Kenobi's life has been so tragic. Is this young Leia? Kidnappers, that's great, that's wonderful, great. Is this what it is? You gotta go save young Leia? What is up guys, welcome back to the channel, my name is Ben, and today I'll be reacting to the first episode of the Kenobi series. Now, after just watching the Solo Star Wars movie, I think that was a very good palette cleanser because we've done Acolyte, we've done Solo, and now on to this one. I'm hoping that this is another sort of step up, I guess. Solo, I think, was enjoyable, but it was mainly, there was a lot of pacing issues. They crammed so much in, and it, there were just things that were just very crammed into it, which when I feel like some things could have been taken out to make the story run smoother. But yeah, now for the Kenobi series, I'm really not sure what to think about this. I'm very excited just to get into it because it's Kenobi, but like, I knew this show existed while watching The Clone Wars, and I was so hoping that this would be like him on, because timeline wise, he's on Tatooine right now. And I was hoping that maybe it was him with Satine on Tatooine, just living life, watching over Luke. But of course, Clone Wars shattered that dream and that just died painfully. So yeah, not really sure what to expect from this because I feel I'm trying to understand if there's a big difference between Kenobi's character from the end of Revenge of the Sith to A New Hope. I feel like he's still kind of the same. He's definitely older. So maybe there's something traumatic that makes him age a bit faster and like actually stresses him out enough to age quickly because it's like 16 years I think he's on Tatooine so there's definitely a big age jump between between Kenobi of Revenge of the Sith and New Hope so maybe that could be explained here then also you have Yoda sending him off on the training to stay like stay sentient after death so you've got that going on so I'm assuming that might be touched on I would hope that be touched on because that's what he left after, that's literally what he did after Yoda sent him here. Now I'm just trying to think what kind of story they can tell here because we know he basically stays on Tatooine looking over Luke and what can you put in there? I think it'll be an interesting idea to see what is able to be put into this scenario because it feels very restrictive and I'm just interesting to, interested to see what they can possibly put here. But yeah, as always, if you do enjoy this video, please remember to like, subscribe, as it really does help the channel to grow. If you do enjoy my content and you want to help support the channel, I do have a Patreon, the link will be in the description. Over there, I'm uploading these videos and the full reaction a week in advance. If that's something you're interested in, feel free to check it out. With that said, let's just dive on in. Oh, oh no, oh, come on. It started so nice, it's order 66, great. That was, that was so good. Okay, I love this opening so far. This is amazing. Starting off lulling me into just reminiscing pad like Padawans being trained, only to have open fire. They're all gonna die, right? I mean, it's sad seeing the clones like this again. I've gotten, I got past this with Bad Batch, but now it's just cool coming back. Yep, dead. Shot through the stomach, great. What the, well, after seeing Acolyte knowing the whole thing with the helmets. Are those the same helmets that deprive senses? I think there's like other ones, but could that help Padawans escape? Being fully in tune with the Force? Maybe able to guide them through the Jedi Temple to actually let some Padawans escape? 10 years later on Tatooine. This is where we're at. Bad Batch is, I would assume, done now. And now in the midst of the Empire. So this should be like a strong Empire at the minute, right? It's not just being birthed, it's here. I'd assume that's it. That's pretty creepy. Ah, oh, Jawas! Oh, that's been so long. Music's awesome. Oh, it's them! Um, okay, Inquisitors! Your head's a whole lot smaller than the animated version. New one. And another new one. Okay. That is the Grand Inquisitor, right? He's got a very small head now. That is their live action version. No, because there was a live action. I haven't been. Live okay, I'm yeah, getting hung up on details. There was a live action version in Revenge of the Sith. That is the same species. This guy just has a smaller head. Their costumes look so cool in live action. I like the presence that they carry with them. They feel so menacing. It feels like um, Tales of the Empire when Lin and Barry showed up on that planet. Everyone just stops. You hunt Jedi. In actuality, I would say Jedi hunt themselves. Interesting. So they're giving themselves away. Jedi cannot help what they are. It involves a Jedi hiding right here in your lovely saloon. I do like this guy. And I like how he's talking about this because of course he would know how to hunt Jedi because he was one once. 
He knows their weaknesses. Maybe he's looking for people like him. Can I be looking for other Jedi? Perhaps the locals are stealing from you, threatening you. So what is the Jedi to do? Protect the innocent. Um, yep. You offer him a place to hide. Fresh water, shade from the suns. How accurate is this? And they travel quickly. His compassion Love the eyes. Looks awesome. his undoing. Oh, why do you interrupt the monologue? Oh! Not Kenobi, just another random Jedi on Tatooine, okay. Oh, he's gonna die. Oh, no. Oh, not murder. You'll never find us all. Ooh, that was close to murder. Oh, conflict. Nicely done. Okay, that was cool. So, rift between these two. Watch who's at the scraps. Scraps are all we have left. You will forget this fixation with Kenobi, or I will relieve you of your duty. Okay, okay. So, she's the after Kenobi and not like, so she's got a vendetta against him? That is interesting. So, most of the Jedi have been hunted at this point, and they're looking for scrap. That's all that's left. All the big ones are, I guess, gone, and now Kenobi's the only one that's left. Because we know Plo Koon's died, Mace is dead, Yoda's just around, so I guess he would be one of the big ones left that they can't find. Was there any other big Jedi that, like, survived? I feel like it's just Yoda and Kenobi, like, the big ones. Of course, Ahsoka, but she wouldn't be considered a big Jedi. And then they think she died on the shipwreck. So it would just be Yoda and Kenobi that are, like, the big ones that are still out there. But why is this new Inquisitor so hung up on Kenobi? Is that meat? What is that? Just meat blocks. You're harvesting that from the skeleton? Okay, this is a weird job. You're just harvesting meat from this giant dead creature. Is Kenobi, has he got... Oh, you're taking food. Yeah, he has employment. He has a job. Kenobi. Okay, so you've taken food. I'll assume that's for yourself. Maybe these people don't pay a lot. It's only half. Please, I have a family. Oh, great. Mm. One more word, I take it all. That's awful. Why even pay them anything at this point? Something you want to say? No. He's a broken Jedi. After everything that's happened, he's not what the Inquisitor said he is. He's moving on. He's not helping people. He's just passing through. This is interesting. So what direction can they take him in then? Can he become the Jedi he once was then? If he isn't the Jedi he is now. But then if he would, is to do that, he, well, okay, interesting, interesting, interesting. If he does become the Jedi he once was and starts helping everyone, then he's obviously gonna get discovered pretty quickly. But if he doesn't, how on earth is he meant to keep his consciousness after four? So I'd imagine a good Jedi would only be able to do that. Okay, so there is bits of like goodness. So the food wasn't for you, it was for your weird space camel. It's nice to know that he wasn't just constantly living in that like Rocky Canyon place that he did go to a city and had a job and he didn't just become a cave hermit. The city planning for this whole place is so weird. Like they had the main city, but people choose to live out all the way over here. Because he lived close by to Luke, and Luke didn't live near the main city. He lived basically in a hole in the ground. It's interesting that he hasn't spoken at all yet. It mainly makes sense, he's got no one to speak to. Like, is it, from a show perspective, it's interesting to not have the main character talk at all for so long. <laughs> What's the Jawa doing? Do you have it? Made friends with the Jawas, that's fun. I'll give you 50. What is it? Yes, I'm going to sell them more stuff. stuff. They need a new processor board. <laughs> they probably stole the parts, don't trust them. If you're going to steal my parts and then sell them back to me, could you at least clean them first, as a courtesy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the Jawas. This is the first time they've spoken, like you can understand them. But like before, they were just making random words. <laughs> Is this actually new, or did you just steal this stuff from him? Ooh, Jedi stuff. Jedi. Oh, they're talking about the one that escaped. I wonder if Kenobi knew, knew this one, because he was a member of the High Council. How, like, were they be aware that, like, every member, or does it get lost in the bureaucracy? Ooh. He's haunted by the past. Okay, he's traumatized. Oh, the whole past, even Qui-Gon. Okay, this is horrifying. I love what they're doing with this, because honestly, Kenobi's life has been so tragic. Like, he's finally, I guess, he's caught up to him, I guess. Now it's actually taking an effect. Master qui -Gon. Master. You're actually trying to talk to him? 
no response. Qui-Gon's being aloof. Because yeah, we... What was his whole thing? Qui-Gon wasn't, like, fully in the Force Ghost, was he? He was, like, just the voice. He couldn't... I... He could, mm, the, the planet, the weird mortis thing confuses me. He was there, but that could have been the brother. So I'm not sure if that was actually Qui-Gon, but then if it is Qui-Gon, he used the power of that place to manifest a physical, like his actual self, not just his voice. So he was a weird type of force ghost. And you just can't hear his voice. So he's just ignoring you then. Because he appeared to Yoda before the training. So he's just like not coming to Kenobi. Oh, is that young Luke? I like that they're actually doing stuff with Luke, because he's, I mean, they can't only do things from the original trilogy. He's one of the oldest characters, and they focused a lot on the prequel stuff. He's gone here in a desert, how can you not find him? Oh, he wants to fly. And you're seeing the Anakin in him, that's, is that traumatic for you, or do you see it as a good thing? I can't tell, he's seeing the Anakin in him. That, I mean, from what you know, you just want to see the good and the bad of it. I mean, it probably hurts just seeing it because you can't go and like talk to him, can you? He's with that family, which is it? Yeah, that's, is that? Yeah, oh, I'm trying to remember the family connection. It was Shmi and her new family after she died. And I think they give it back to them, but I can't remember exactly how it was. Because you had Shmi's new husband, you had children, and I think Luke was given to them. Oh, you're actually leaving things? You're making contact? Oh, great, something's watching him. Why are you out at night? I mean, I get it. You want to try and get the kid some, like, like whatever the plane wing was. Feels way too risky. You have a mission here. I thought I saw you in town, but I wasn't sure. No. I don't think you'd survive. You're making some kind of mistake. Don't like this. That, they set that scene up weirdly. You have people looking over the bank and this guy just waltzes into the screen. Don't like that. Someone else is here. What are you doing here, Obi-Wan? My name is Ben. Oh, please. Okay, not helping. Yep, not Jedi. Not Jedi, like, at all. You'll draw too much attention. But I have nowhere to go. They're hunting me. You can't stay here. Walk into the middle of the desert and bury it in the ground. That's really the only way. What about the people that need us? What about the fight? Oh. Good Jedi. What happened to you? You were once a great Jedi. Time of the Jedi is over. Hmm, this scene is interesting. He's been confronted by his past. It's not as impactful as that, hmm. It's interesting. It's very casual. He's come across a Jedi out in the desert, someone that from his old life, and that's just... This is very pretty, wow. Okay, wow. So much different than Tatooine. Yeah, he's come across someone from his old life, and it's just brushed off. You think, I, I mean, do I want him to have a bigger reaction to seeing another Jedi again? I don't know. I mean, it makes sense. Like, it makes sense, yeah, it makes sense. It's him not helping, it's him being broken. We're going to be late. This place is beautiful. So try not to make anyone cry. There will be sweet mellows at the reception after. This is who I think it is. This is the same planet I think it is. I will let you. Oh, no. She's either in the cellar, in the kitchen, or in the woods. Is this the planet I'm thinking is? I'm trying to remember the name. It got blown up by the Death Star. Leia's planet. Is this young Leia? Surprising seeing you here. Already feels a whole lot more upbeat than whatever Kenobi's going through. Cute droid. Like, it reminds me of a ladybug with the way it's moving its wings. Pleasure barge, boring. See no ship. Not bad. She can recognize ships, wow. Because at this point, the council would still be there, so Organa still has a job, right? So he's still important. You had to do this today? Do what? Down. Okay, so we're actually seeing the mum. This is interesting. Because, yeah, we don't, we basically only know Organa, so we're actually getting to see the mum as well. No Lola for the rest of the day. But she didn't do anything. Oh, Lola. If you behaved as well as you climb, you'd be a senator already. It's a really weird thing this planet is going to get blown up in the future. All I ever do is wave. Then do more than wave. You get out of this what you put into it. Aww. So, yeah, she's basically being motivated by her mum and her dad to do great things in the galaxy. You know, I can feel you doing that. <laughs> okay, this is an adorable child. I'm just wondering, like, how is she connected to all this? Why is she here? Oh great, there's a creepy guy in the woods. How, what happened yeah. So, Leia in a Kenobi show. That is not something I was expecting at all. Kenobi's on Tatooine. First made contact with her when R2 showed up. So that's interesting that she's like, seems to have a good part in this. She seems like a main thing. 
Tatooine is such a weird planet. I feel like it could be something really interesting, like a desert dwelling civilization, but it's so like decayed and so run down. And they clearly have a bunch of different. Oh. See that? There's a whole galaxy out there. I'm asking you to leave us alone, Ben. Can I be overstepping a bit? It'll be time at one point. You don't care if he's okay. You care if he's showing. It's my responsibility. Oh, he's the same actor. He looks so from like similar to the one from Revenge of the Sith. So leave him on the farm with his family where he belongs. Okay, so you fully want him there. So I mean, you die. So hmm. I love you. Oh, 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 Kenobi. Okay, this is bad. He's instantly recognizable. So as soon as they see him, that's like a very, very bad thing. Or you'll be punished. Riva. Hands go first. Okay, why? Okay, every ink was just fighting there. When you reach for anything, you think of us. That's dark. You have no rights here. We're not under the Empire. Oh, oh, oh wow. Okay, that's very, wow. Anyone knows anything about a Jedi? Yes, they're not looking for Kenobi, they're looking for the other one. You say a word. You know something? They can look into your mind. Great. But they're dark sides. They're not structured and they're not like trained physically in the set. They're like, they just know inklings of things that people know. Owen. Oh, farmer, right? Yep, they can see it. Families of no concern to they you. They might be. You got a Jedi on that farm too? Nah. I have no love for the Jedi. Jedi vermin. I kill vermin on my farm. I would say that's true. He probably does think that. It's important. He's clearly suspicious of him now, so that's like, that's bad. He knows there's a connection there. Tell me where the Jedi is, or this man and his family die! Why are you against this? This feels like very in line with what the Inquisitors would do. Why are they against her doing her stuff? There is no point in protecting them. They would not do the same for you. At this point, Kenobi wouldn't, but... Uh... Save his family. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Can't do anything. What can you do? If you remember anything, rewards will be given. Stand down, third sister. Third sister. Why though? Next time. But why? Why stop her from doing this? That feels um, relatively good. Move. You... Okay, we're actually gonna get information. There's a scene with them. Good. Why? I'm too impulsive. I'm sick of wasting time. The Grand Inquisitor was right. You still want Kenobi. In case that's what they're seeing it as. We spent the last 10 years looking for him. Maybe you've been looking in the wrong places. I still don't get how this, like, is the big friction between, I guess, these lot. What's your connection to Kenobi then? Is it, so she's third sister, that's high up, because... Full third sister. Third sister, You're going yeah. too far. Who's second then? I would assume first is the Grand Inquisitor, and that's the first, is like above the first. So I feel like... The, the, the numbering order feels pretty obvious that the higher numbers would be more important. Yeah, so why... I don't know if that's a good ex explanation for why they're against her method, saying that she's too impulsive. I didn't do it for you. He did it for her son, because Luke is Jedi or sensitive. That's who he was protecting, because he doesn't like the Jedi, so I think all of his emotions came that very clearly through in his mind and was able to hide it pretty well. And back to this beautiful looking planet, which looks so stunning. Right on time, as always. Organa! Good today. A trade ship and an Aquilian Ranger. Probably scouring for pirates. Oh, we encourage it. As much as I can't understand why she's here, I do like the family dynamic. It's fun. Hi, cousin. And you don't care about her at all, that's that's mean. But how much they're gonna play into the adopted idea? Because does she know she's adopted at this point? Because I feel like the family. Well, like the cousin would obviously know, and would that make them act differently around her? Because I don't know if she knows. You don't need manners when you're talking to a lower life form. And I guess I don't need manners when I'm talking to you. Okay, good, nice sass. It's nice seeing like Leia's personality when she's this young. They don't want anybody to know about you because you're not one of us. You're not even a real organ. Okay, oh great, so there she knows, That's and that's why this guy's treating her so awfully. You want him to like you so you repeat what he says. Even though you don't really know what it means. That's wow. Like him will make people frightened of you. But really, you're the one who's scared. Smart girl. Mm. I may not have seen much, cousin. She's so tiny. <laughs> but I can see that. Okay, good way to shut him down. Did you hear all of that? He was being horrible. Yes, you did. You have to rise above Leia. You owe him an apology. I'm trying to remember if Leia was this brash when she was growing up. I, feel, mm, I don't know. This feels very much... Young Ahsoka type, I feel like Leia was definitely outspoken and very much, but she was also, I guess, 
dignified. It was more like Organa, but a bit more like out there. Organa would hold his tongue, Leia wouldn't. This is your future, Leia. A few years you'll be off to university, then junior senate. A few years this planet's gonna blow up. It may seem so. I don't want to be a senator. Which is why you'll probably be one of the best. Yeah, that's a good point. Not even a real Organa. Oh. So you didn't hear everything that was said. You are an Organa in every way. I like this, and my brain is still thinking like how it is in a Kenobi story, but I still like this. But for now, we will apologize. Yeah. She did nothing wrong. Why apologize? Apology admits guilt. I'll wait for you downstairs. And she ain't going. Yep, yeah, okay, yep, yeah, she's run off into the forest. What, is that back to the. The creepy thing was here. There was a guy here. She's gone. I thought you said you've really got through there. At least they know. At least they know. I know who she's like. Send a unit. Who, right? Be far. Who, who, I can't know who that's referring to. There's the creepy dude. Is she saying who she's like as in. You're just running straight up to this dude? Hello, princess. Nope, nope, nope. Just waiting. For what? For you. Nope, 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 nope. Run. Okay, kidnappers. That's great. That's wonderful. Great. And you took her droid off her. Does she have her droid that could be useful? How are these th two adults not faster than the small child? Okay, good use of surroundings, but still. Go underneath the branch. There's so many ways to get to her, are you? I think now that's just incompetence. Go around the tree. There's a you could have gone backwards a little bit. And shot. Great. Have none of okay. And you're not gonna grab her? And she's been bagged. Okay. Is this what it is? Are you gonna go save young Leia? That thing would be so annoying. Does it not turn off after a while? They knew where she would be. They, they were waiting. She needs you, Obi Wan. We can't trust anyone else. Still so hung up on who they said that she was like. Is that saying that she was like Anakin or Padme or Organa? My duty is to the boy. What about your duty to his sister? Interesting, interesting, interesting. She's as important as he is. Okay, th uh, this gives me a lot of thoughts. I do like the emphasis on Leia. Could she, uh, would she be force sensitive? Because like, she is it, it's very interesting. I'm not who I used to be. He's broken and this is what can make him right. So, okay, okay, okay. So he, uh, da, 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 da. Find someone else. Oh wow, actually turning it down. Okay, yeah, he is broken. Okay, I'm trying to think. Um, Cause yeah, I do like the emphasis on Leia and her, cause yeah, she's just Luke's twin. So I like that they're giving her more things to do and just how important she is. But of course the original films focus on Luke. Leia is there, she's amazing, but of course the focus is on Luke. And I'm still in the back of my mind, it's like, why is she here? So they're gonna meet then before the original trilogy? I've had very much like a first time meeting sort of situation. But yes, he turned it down, but he's obviously gonna go and find her. I do like the repeating, like, his day-to-day -day life. It shows how monotonous it is. Now, I guess, broken he must be to go through with it like this. It feels very draining. That is... Okay, wow. That's gonna be the Jedi, isn't it? Okay, hung weirdly. Not hung like I thought he would be. Thought it would've been, like, neck, sort of. Now just hung up like that. Okay, I'm dead. Sends a message. Oh, that means they'll leave. Ah, red light. Is that meant to mean someone's inside? That didn't turn red when the jar was in there. Okay, creepy. She's headed for Dayu. Oh, whoa, you actually came all the way here. I'm not the man you remember. Well, you're going to have to be. I can't leave the boy. This isn't about the boy and you know it. Mm, yeah, yeah, but... Mistakes, we all did. The past. Move on, be done with it. Healthier spot, nice. Can... There is no one I trust more with my child than you. I mean, technically, Luke would be more important since he is the one that saves Vader, who brings down the Empire. Leia, definitely important, but not like at that standard. But yes, of course, he would should go and save her. Like, I'm just interested on like the whole idea of this concept of what he's doing in the show. Oh, she did have the joy and they kept her hands free. That's a bad mistake on kidnappers. What can this? It has a bus saw. What you gave a bus off to a child? 
No, don't, no, no. Hey! Father will rescue me. He'll send a whole army. No one's coming for you. I don't like this guy at all. I'm, I'm trying to understand Leia here. It's interesting. I don't know if I'd prefer her to be terrified or not, because again, she's a very, very young child. You know, I think it would have been cool to see her be terrified and overcome it and become the strong Leia we know, but having her always be this strong and willful is interesting, I would say. It would be nice to see that develop rather than just be all, her always be that way. Like to not be afraid when you're being kidnapped and trafficked across the galaxy, that's, that's, in, that's, it seems kind of weird. Did you bury your lightsaber like you told the other guy to do and now you've got to try and find it in the desert? That's got to be impossible. But Jedi, Force, you can sense the crystal, hopefully. Kidnapping kids? You think it's gonna work? Who are they kidnapping her for? Who would know? Who? No one should know. It should just be to try and get at Organa. I'm trying to think of the only people that knew were Padme, who's dead, Yoda, who's on Dagobah. It's nice that you left it in a wooden box at least, and not just the lightsaber itself in the sand. Two. Was one of them Anakin's? I think he had Anakin's lightsaber. He took it and gave it to Luke. Fought the side of father during the war. He'll come. He won't be able to help it. Wait, 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 wait. The Jedi will hunt himself. You know what? So you hired them. You said that she, uh, he fought beside her father in the war. You know that Leia's father is Anakin. If you know that, why doesn't Vader? That, that seems like a problem. How does she know? that Leia is Anakin's child. And if she knows that, does she not know about Luke? Come on, you got, yeah, uh, leaving Tatooine, I mean, nah. So far it's an interesting idea, but I, mm, I guess I'm on board with it, I'm on board with it. It's just, I don't like how they know, uh, it feels like they've shoehorned Leia in a little, a little bit. That Inquisitor shouldn't know, the third sister, she should not know the fact that she does know breaks a few things for me. Hopefully they'll reveal it, but then if they're, how on earth does she know it and Vader doesn't? Okay, that was a good first episode. I like how they set that up. That was a good premiere. Right, lot to digest from this. I think overall, I do like that. That was a very good premiere, sets up the show well, shows where Kenobi is and what he needs to develop towards. Plus it is awesome just seeing Kenobi again and just seeing how much he's going through because he was such a cool character and there's so much that can be done with him with how much he's been through. I'm surprised they didn't show off Satine's death and it's definitely that would be another thing just haunting him. But maybe that's just there like would they want to include animated stuff with live action flashbacks? I feel like it deserved to be there for me. But yeah but now I'm like thinking about the idea of Leia. I've got to I see I've got to try and hold back on a lot of the thoughts because immediately the third in sister knowing the Anakin's child is Leia is just not right for me. I was like, that's the, yeah. Because immediately if she knows, why doesn't Vader know? That is like a huge, huge, huge thing to just shove out there. I'm hoping it gets explained. It needs to be explained, but it needs to be explained very well. How on earth did that secret get out? And how is it not being brought to Vader's attention? How is it being kept from him? Because surely Vader and the third sister would be in the same room at some point and he could look into her mind and see this stuff. So that, it sets up a lot of little problems for me, I guess. Hopefully it gets explained. This is only the first episode, waiting for more information. But then I think the idea of Leia being in the show. Awesome to see her and get more on her, I guess. So I, I, just seeing Han Solo is cool. They're going back to old characters. So we've got Han back. Now I guess doing stuff with Leia. I mean, you can't really do much with Luke because his first introduction to basically the world of Star Wars is in the original trilogy. Didn't get much on Leia's past, but now I guess we're getting it. And I guess it's an interesting direction that they're going down that they met beforehand. It's weird. I don't know if I like it or not yet. I'll wait to see if I like it or not. If the show is like good and does a good job at this whole thing, I guess it wouldn't be that bad. If the show does and is like bad, I guess, then I guess, then it wouldn't be worth introducing this idea then, if that makes sense. I just got to hold back a lot of my thoughts. This is only the first episode and it could change my mind right now it's just like ah what are they like why do that sort of thing why bring it in but they could try and they can i guess make it work it's just like right off the bat like that's a huge thing to do but yeah premise of the show awesome inquisitors look awesome and they're hunting jedi like what they did with this one jedi that ha they have been kept like caught and displaying their body in the town square that's super dark. But the friction between the Inquisitors, that bit's confusing me. I get, don't get why they would be against the third sister. Like, they say that she's impulsive. 
isn't every dark side person impulsive? They rely on emotions. That's basically what the Grand Inquisitor was teaching Barris to do. So why are they trying to teach restraint now? I just don't know if their fiction against the third sister is justified or well explained. The main thing is that she has an obsession over Kenobi, which I'm hoping to get more information on because just having it out white is, feels weird, but waiting for more information on why she has this vendetta against him because I don't think Kenobi's ever met this woman, so I don't know why she would want... Because, yeah, there's a new character. I don't... Hey, was she in Clone Wars or anything? I don't think so. So brand new character who now has a very personal vendetta against Kenobi. Interesting, but definitely need it explained. But yeah, then looking at Kenobi himself, I do really like just everything going on with this character at the minute. Seeing his trauma, how that's affecting him, and how he is trying to connect with Qui-Gon, so which I assume is part of his training to live on after de after death. Shame that, I guess, I, would he go to the planet Yoda went to? I feel like that could be really cool to do in live action. Don't know if they do it though, because it's like Tatooine, it's a very contradict. it's like, I don't, would it fit in with the aesthetic the show is, because it feels very desert. The poster looks super desert-like, so I don't know if it's like meant to stay in Tatooine. It would be awesome to actually go to the Force businesses and do the training, because Yoda's, it was, he had to do a lot. He had to face his like dark, darkest side, face the vision, like the Ahsoka dying, seeing Dooku and the perfect stuff. He had to do a whole lot of stuff. So it'd be interesting to see what they do for Kenobi to be able to live on after death. But it feels like the first step is communicating with Qui-Gon. That's what they've set up. That'd be cool to actually have him do that. Yeah, so it's clear, we know what his journey is, we know what he has to do and become through the show, and I just like that he is a shell of his former self. After everything he's been through, it makes perfect sense, now he actually gets to process all the chaotic stuff in his life. Okay, I really enjoyed this first look at the Kenobi show. It's really, the premise is really interesting, seeing what he's like, doing on Tatooine. Like just him as a character is such a cool thing to go into, because he deserves like a whole spotlight after everything he's been through. I'm surprised they didn't talk about Satine at all in the little flashback looking thing at his dream. That, I mean, yeah, it's a shame, but I get it, live action, all that stuff. But the character himself is so filled with, I would assume, trauma after everything that he has gone through. So it's nice that that's actually having an effect on him. And it did break him. It makes perfect sense. So it's nice that we're getting to see how the Kenobi of Revenge of the Sith links to A New Hope. Because they are very different characters now looking back. Kenobi, at the end of Revenge of the Sith, had to defeat Anakin, had to leave him for dead because he couldn't bring himself to kill his brother, and had to go look after the child of the person he thought was dead. And then Kenobi in the future is much more cheerful. He teaches Luke, he comes off as like a wise, kind of fun grandpa sort of person. So there's a very contrasting character there, so it's clear he went through something during that time in between, and this is it. He now has to go from his trauma-riddled self to back to how he used to be, to being the fun Kenobi that we know. The happy, I guess, the one that can see joy in life, not one that is controlled by his past. The also thing is just really cool seeing Ewan McGregor again as Kenobi, because like, the prequels like are so like fun to me. I know they're divide. I know it's divided between fans and whether they not like it compared to the original, but it's just having that because that was the first Star Wars movies I watched during this reaction stuff. So it's nice just seeing this actor again playing the character. I am wondering if along the lines of this show we're going to see him change and start to look more like the Kenobi from A New Hope. I'm sorry, I can't remember that actor's name. And maybe we'll start to see him turn grey, the stress of whatever this new mission is, and it will get him to the place. And I guess, because he's got to age a lot in 16 years, because right now he doesn't feel like he's that old. He still doesn't feel that old. And I hope by the end of the show he does feel a lot older. Yeah, then I guess we have Leia. Now that is an interesting thing to introduce to the show. I'll keep it as interesting for the time being. Don't know whether or not I like it or dislike it. it. All depends on how the story plays out, on why they introduced her here. I remember from The New Hope that that was like the first time they met, because she knew his name, but I just assumed that's because her dad knew Kenobi. So it's, it's an interesting decision to have her be in it. I don't know. It's interesting that someone came up with the idea to introduce her now. Her personality, very much Leia-like from the original trilogy, it's just, I don't know if I would have preferred to have seen her develop that personality. Have her be a child and just chaotic and fun and scared and all these things that a child is, and then have her grow into the personality that we see. Having her just, I guess, always be this way, I feel like is a bit disappointing, but they can still do fun stuff with it. I think I would have just preferred to see her grow into being the layer that we know. But I think it is just awesome that we're seeing all these details from her life 
anyway. Her family dynamic with Organa and his wife, I don't know what Organa's wife's name. I guess they'd both be called Organa then, because I don't even know Organa's first name. It's just Senator Organa. So it's cool that we got confirmation that she knew for a very long time that she was adopted, and that, and how that's just playing into the family dynamic. I love seeing Organa's interactions with her, because like, we know him with Padme, so now it's, he's talking to, I guess, Padme's daughter, but it's also his daughter. It's such a really nice, heartwarming little interactions that they have, and how much he is going to fight for her. Because he knows that he failed Padme, and that's probably what he blames himself for. So he's definitely not going to, like, let anything happen to Leia. I hope that he continues to have a good role in this. I hope he isn't just in the first episode to send Kenobi on the journey. I hope he gets to do more, because he is Leia's dad. I hope that he isn't pushed to the side by Kenobi, even though it is Kenobi's show, because, yeah, I, he is important to Leia's life. Yeah, I think just very interesting to see you again. There's positives and negatives to it. I'd like to see how it's explained that she is here now. I guess she doesn't remember him in A New Hope, because he's going to rescue her now, so they're obviously going to meet, and she's obviously a main part of this show. So it'll be very, very interesting. Then we have the third sister, New Inquisitor, along with the other New Inquisitor. So we've got three here. We've got the main guy with the head. Not big head right now, just head. And we've got the green looking dude, and now we have the third sister. She, interesting character so far, very dark, very impulsive. And she has this vendetta against Kenobi, which I'm looking forward to find out, but she also has information on Anakin's children, which is a terrifying thing to think about. So it feels like there's a little few things there that need very good explanations to allow them to fit. If they're not explained well, that's hiccups in a lot of things, which is just, ah. Yeah, waiting to see how that sort of, kind of, like, works itself out. She's an interesting character so far, very, Im the impulsivity is something I would have thought the Inquisitors would have encouraged. The friction between the, her and the rest of the Inquisitors is being explained that she's got this vendetta against Kenobi and that she's impulsive. I can get the, the you know, vendetta against Kenobi, they see it as a waste of time, he's gotten away, they've given up, but she's still at it, so they're just annoyed by that. But having it show off in the field seems a bit weird, like she's doing a lot of stuff that dark side people would do. Killing, threatening, doing all this. I don't get why they'd object to that. But yeah, I guess the main thing about her at the minute is just what she knows. I think she's quite a dark character, looking forward to getting to know her more, because she, I guess, is a new Inquisitor, because we've seen Lynn and, and not Lynn, whatever her the sister, because they lost their names, Barris, the bird looking dude, he's dead, and there was another one with the Grand Inquisitor. None of these th two were with the Grand Inquisitor in Tales of the Empire. Yeah, actually looking interested to get more information on all of them, but right now, third sister knows who Anakin's children are. That is a big thing, and I need that explained fast. Now, as for the rest of the Inquisitors, love the way you're seeing them in live action, because I'm trying to think, because everyone seems to know about them, so I'm not sure when they're introduced, but it's cool just seeing them in live action. I don't know if this is the first time in live action, but they're very cool looking costumes. Big head dude, I feel like, personally, it's kind of weird that he doesn't have a big head. <laughs> seeing him in Tales of the Empire, it's clear what species he is. We saw them in live action in Revenge of the Sith. That's when Kenobi went to the planet and he met those people and that's where he killed Grievous. So we know that their big heads can be done in live action. Interesting choice not to do it here. I, there would be, I, I like that they got the yellow eyes. That's cool. I do like his monologue at the start where he's explaining what the Jedi do and how they hunt them. That's all really interesting. And they, I love the presence that they carry with them. The green one, do they haven't, I don't think they've said what rank he is. That's also cool. I, I hope we get more, more information on all of them. It's a really cool concept and I hope, I just want more information on it. So I'd say the Inquisitors as a whole are the antagonists of this show. The third sister is, would connect the other two to the abduction mission, which is now connecting Kenobi to it. So that's the main central plot. And because it, it'll be interesting to see how this all works itself out because Kenobi has to stay hidden for the original trilogy. No one knows about him. And if they come into contact with each other, which they kind of have to being protagonist antagonist, how does he stay hidden? It'll be very, very interesting. And I hope I, it's clear that there's a focus on the one the, on the third sister compared to the other two but I hope that they all get a good chance to shine. But then again, how does that, I, there's a lot, I think they've set up a lot of interesting stuff. My brain is spinning on how this all connects. And I'm just, I'm both hoping for a lot from them, but I'm also hoping that they just don't like even see Kenobi. I think I will say I am definitely looking forward to a fight scene with them, I guess. I mean, Kenobi's gonna have to come into contact and then they're gonna have to try and explain the, how they, he stays hidden. But I am looking forward to seeing a fight scene with the twisting lightsaber in live action. I think that would be really cool. In Tales of the Empire, it's really cool how it's used. And because, yeah, it was explained that basically Palpatine mandated that saber 
because he saw Maul's technique and was actually impressed by it. That's awesome. So I'd love to see that in live action and just see a fight scene with it in live action. Then we also have Luke and Owen. Is, would Owen be the same actor as the one? Because they did a little recap and flashback in this episode where it showed the Owen former end of the Sith when Kenobi handed Luke over. So I don't know if that is the same actor. They look very, very similar, which is awesome. But it's cool that we actually got a scene where Owen got to do something big. That's quite good because all I remember of Owen is that he died and he was tried to be a good father to Luke. But of course, he's talked badly about the Jedi and he was eventually killed and that sent Luke off onto his journey. So it's cool that actually doing something with him and that he got to protect Luke and be a good dad here. So I love that. And then we also got to see Luke and see him wanting to be a pilot. That's great into his character, but it's also the people around him are trying to spot whether or not he's like Anakin and whether or not he's showing force sensitivity. That is what they're keeping an eye on. I mean, it's really interesting because we've seen like babies have force sensitivity in Bad Batch, that small little thing that Cad Bane abducted. That could throw stuff across the marketplace. So it's interesting that Luke, I guess, doesn't do that even as a baby. I do like the paranoia behind what on earth like not want the paranoia around what's going on with him will he start showing and it, they're kind of scared for him to start showing because for Kenobi he wants him to to be able to train him to go on with the whole empire destruction thing but also you have the issue of him having to leave his parents and him becoming like Anakin and that's the big concern that everyone would be fearing I hope that we get more focus on him because I think yeah Kenobi's left the planet now but I hope that they don't just overshadow Luke with Leia, I hope they did balance both of them because they are both equally as important with maybe Luke going a little bit above since he is the one that convinces Vader to turn and then to destroy the Empire. But I hope that they strike a good balance. Having them both in the show is really cool, but I hope they do get enough sort of spotlight each. It's clear Leia is going to get more, but I hope Luke doesn't get forgotten. Now the Jedi that we see, he's never got named, but it's cool that we're actually seeing that sort of side of things. It's 10 years after the fall and this one had a whole lot of hope still. That's impressive. And he died. We didn't see how he died. There was not like any mark with a lightsaber slashes on him. He was just hung up and died there, which is very dark. I mean, it could have been darker if they had the rope around his neck rather than his waist. But at least it set off how the presence of the Inquisitors and what they're going to do. I don't know, looking what he does for the plot, Kenobi sees it. And I guess that could be a path for him to change it. Because he's obviously going to blame himself for that, right? He turned this Jedi away. And then he died, which is very, very sad. Yeah, I do like that we just got to see a Jedi still around 10 years later, still being this hopeful and wanting to continue the fight. It's cool, a little weird that they're still trying and they haven't given up, but cool nonetheless. Yeah, as for just the premiere of the show, I think this did a very good job at setting up the story and just hooking me in. I think I, so far, really like this episode. I am hooked into watching the rest of the show. This was a good premiere. Set up the main plot with Kenobi trying to save Leia from the Inquisitors. It's already got my head spinning on ideas of how do the third sister know about Leia and that connection to Anakin? Does she know Anakin is Vader? All of this sort of thing. It's a very interesting, it's got me hooked and I'm very interested to see where this story can go now. I think this did a great job at showing off where Kenobi is as a character, where his story should end up. I think only issue with it is Leia's side of things. Why bring her in now? That's an interesting choice. And I think only disappointment is that she's already this confident and this powerful as a person rather than getting to see her be like scared and afraid and a child and then develop into the strong layer that we know. But yeah, overall, great episode. Set up the story well. Writing was good, structure wise good. Pacing was great. I like the little repetition of showing Kenobi's life, cutting up the meat, saving a bit, getting the check, going on the bus, getting back to Tatooine, leaving. So that was not Tatooine, the main city, and then leaving. So like that monotony of his life, showing that it's not the Jedi's life and that it must be driving him a little bit insane. I like the setup for the story and everything that's doing. I love getting to see the Inquisitors. The world building as well, getting to see Tatooine Plus. I can't, what is the planet called? Um, Organa's planet, I can't remember the name of it. I think it's called Onderon. I feel like that's the name. Yeah, so it's cool getting to see that place again, just seeing all of this stuff being expanded upon. I think this was a great introduction to the show and I cannot wait to see what else happens with it. As for what I assume would happen next, I'd assume now that Kenobi has to try and save, the main idea is that Kenobi has to save Leia. Hopefully Organa is involved quite a bit because he's the dad. I would love for him to do stuff to try and protect her and save her. 
because I you obviously would have guilt from losing Padme, so of course he doesn't want to lose her daughter, his daughter. But I'm think I'm very looking forward to just seeing Kenobi's journey and him becoming the fi well not fixing but like healing himself and becoming the better Jedi that he once was and getting over the past, not, no longer being defined by it. I feel like that's a really good story to try and tell here. With that said, that does bring me to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about this episode in the comments. Did you like it? What do you think of the whole layer aspect of things? But yeah, with that, I will see you in the next one.